It's the representation of diversity. It's very different, these movies now. These movies are about cultural anxiety. They're about a real sense that we might be in an a post coming towards a post-apocalyptic future. There's real anxiety about the hypocrisies of religion and politics, uh, fear of loss, fear of loss of identity, fear of the world around us, uh, like the lost daughter. Um, so in a way, when you get something like West Side Story, which I think is a brilliant movie, it kind of became a blip. I mean, it's weird. It's, it's, it's a Spielberg movie. It's probably better than the original West Side Story. It's one of the great classics. And not people aren't talking about it that much. Um, but that movie would have been, in previous years, the big movie everyone was talking about. And very few people are talking about it because these other movies are more urgent. They just feel more relevant. Uh, most of them are, again, trying to appeal uh, everything from Coda to King Richard to Licorice Pizza. They're really trying to appeal to a younger generation uh, in different ways. Um, I think that two of those, uh, Coda and Licorice Pizza, are, are trying to shift the culture a little bit, first in terms of considering who can perform in a film and you know, what is the, what, how, do, how do films communicate? That would be the case of Coda. Or um, should recognized actors, is that necessary as a vehicle for a film getting nominated? That would be the case of Licorice Pizza. Right, that you're not working with, for, you're not starting off with star power. There's an attempt to uh, either take them back in time and to imagine themselves growing up in a period that really preceded them and that they didn't know firsthand, uh, which would be licorice pizza, but or, or uh, to get them to think about how to strive in their lives or what they're aiming for. So it's less about the stakes of art cinema versus commercial cinema than I think about generation. Licorice Pizza, I'm glad you mentioned it because it's one of my favorite coming of age movies of all time. Generations Before You, A Generation Before Me was a movie called The Graduate. And it really is this era's snapshot of that kind of movie. It's that kind of coming of age movie. Um, I love it for the same reason that I loved last year, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's an amazing snapshot of the 70s. It's a great look at that. It's a great coming of age story told in a way that we've never seen before. Do I think it'll win? No, frankly, I'm shocked that it made it into the best uh, uh, picture nomination, but that's the win. That's about as far as it's gonna get. I think it's going to be the power of the dog. Uh, but you never know. Much like Blindside was a popular movie that blindsided the Academy when it won the Academy Award, I think King Richard is a popular film that we'd like to see win that category. It'd be great to see it win that category. I think it's going to go to the power of the dog just based on all the, the indicators so far. You know, we've got Drive My Car, which is a foreign language film, a three three hour foreign language film from Japan. Um, we've got Power of the Dog, which is a very subtle uh, drama. It's almost, the, the, the huge drama in it is almost missed if you're not totally paying attention, but it's also a Western. Um, and then we have Dune, you know, the big uh, action movie, West Side Story, a big musical. Uh, Belfast is, is a black and white, like, you know, coming of age story set in the 60s in, in Ireland. I mean, it's just a lot of different type of stuff. And I think mostly that's because we were at home last year and you know the the uh, streaming services have really hit hard uh, with some with some quality films this year to try to uh, bring a semblance of normalcy back to uh, an industry that was pretty much decimated the year before. Um, they're back this year and they're all over the place.